Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining me once again for another edition of The Outsiders by Essie Hinton. Um, Miss Pierce here. Um, we're getting ready to read chapter 11 today, which if memory serves me correctly, chapter 11 is by far the shortest chapter um, in this novel. So we're going to kind of get through it as quickly as possible today, but as thoroughly and with as much understanding as possible, which means we will stop a few times along the way to discuss a few things. Um, and just a quick recap, at this point in the novel, um, Johnny and Dally have died, um, which is so sad. Um, and we're starting to see how different characters are coping with that and are dealing with that. We know that Pony Boy, he went into a delirious state and he was basically asleep and in and out of consciousness for um, several days. And he wakes up and is immediately concerned about the relationship between him and Derry, and as far as, you know, is that still going to be in a positive place? He's still trying to wrap his head around losing Johnny and Pony Boy, but now, as the dust is starting to settle, we got to try to figure out, is Pony going to be able to stay with his family? Is he going to be in trouble? They have now this court case coming up um, to kind of figure out what's going on as far as Johnny having killed um, Bob, is there going to be any, you know, legal action taken in that case? So a lot of things are still up in the air, even though we've already had like the climax of the story, the crazy part with all the action. Um, we are in that falling, um, that falling action of the story. And we're trying to figure out where things are going to land before we get into our resolution. So here we go. Chapter 11 of The Outsiders. I had to stay in bed a whole week after that. That bugged me. I'm not the kind that can lie around looking at the ceiling all the time. I read most of the time and drew pictures. One day, I started flipping through one of Soda's yearbooks and came across a picture that seemed vaguely familiar. Not even when I read the name Robert Sheldon did I think it hit me who it was. And then I finally realized it was Bob. I took a real good long look at it. The picture didn't look a whole lot like Bob. I remembered, but nobody ever looks a whole lot like his picture in yearbook anyway. He had been a sophomore that year. That would make him about 18 when he died. Yeah, he was good looking even then, with a grin that reminded me of Soda's, a kind of reckless grin. He had been a handsome black-haired boy with dark eyes, maybe brown like Soda's, maybe dark blue like the shepherd boys. Maybe he'd had black eyes like Johnny, and I had never given Bob much thought. I hadn't had time to think. But that day, I wondered about him. What was he like? I knew he liked to pick fights, had the usual social belief that living on the west side made you Mr. Super Tough, looked good in dark wine-colored sweaters, and was proud of his rings. But what about the Bob Sheldon that Cherry Valance knew? She was a smart girl. She didn't like him just because he was good-looking. Sweet and friendly, stands out from the crowd. That's what she had said. A real person. The best buddy a guy ever had kept trying to make somebody stop him. Randy had told me that. Did he have a kid brother who idolized him? Maybe a big brother who kept bugging him not to be so wild? His parents let him run wild because they loved him too much or too little. Did they hate us now? I hoped they hated us, that they weren't full of that pity the victims of environment junk the social workers kept handing Curly Shepherd every time he got sent off to reform school. I'd rather have anybody's hate than their pity. But then, maybe they understood, like Cherry Valance. I looked at Bob's picture and I could begin to see the person we had killed. A reckless, hot-tempered boy, cocky and scared stiff at the same time. Pony boy? Yeah? I didn't look up. I thought it was the doctor. He'd been coming over to see me almost every day, although he didn't do much except talk to me. Because, yeah, guys, keep in mind, remember, this was written back in a time when doctors made house calls, so... He thought it was just a doctor there. I wonder who it is. There's a guy here to see you. Says he knows you? Something in Derry's voice made me look up, and his eyes were hard. His name's Randy. Randy? Okay. Yeah, I know him, I said. You want to see him? Yeah, I shrugged. Sure, why not? A few guys from school have dropped by to see me. I have quite a few friends at school, even if I am younger than most of them and don't talk much. But that's what they are, school friends, not buddies. 
I had been glad to see them, but it bothered me because we lived in kind of a lousy neighborhood and our house isn't real great. It's run down looking and everything, and the inside's kind of poor looking too, even though for a bunch of boys, we do a pretty good job of house cleaning. Most of my friends at school came from good homes, not filthy rich like the Soches, but middle class anyway. It was a funny thing. It bugged me about my friends seeing our house, but I couldn't have cared less about what Randy thought. That's interesting. Hi, pony boy. Randy looked uncomfortable standing in the doorway. Hi, Randy, I said. Have a seat if you can find one. Books were lying all over everything. He pushed a couple off a chair and sat down. How are you feeling? Cherry told me your name was on the school bulletin. I'm okay. You can't really miss my name on any kind of bulletin. He still looked uncomfortable, although he tried to grin. Want to smoke? I offered him a weed, but he shook his head. No, thanks. Uh, pony boy, one reason I came here was to see if you were okay, but you, we gotta go see the judge tomorrow. Yeah, I said, lighting a cigarette. I know. Hey, holler if you see one of my brothers coming. I'll catch it for smoking in bed. My dad says for me to tell the truth and nobody can get hurt. He's kind of upset about all this. I mean, my dad's a good guy and everything, better than most. And I kind of let him down being mixed up in all this. I just looked at him. That was the dumbest remark I had ever heard anyone make. He thought he was mixed up in this? He didn't kill anyone. He didn't get his head busted in and rumble. It wasn't his buddy that was shot down under streetlights. Besides, what did he have to lose? His old man was rich and he could pay whatever fine that was be there fine there was for being drunk and picking a fight. I wouldn't mind getting fined, Randy said, but I feel lousy about the old man, and it's the first time I've felt anything in a long time. The only thing I'd felt in a long time was being scared. Scared stiff. I put off thinking about the judge and the hearing for as long as I could. Soda and Derry didn't like to talk about it either, so we were all really silent, counting off the days while I was sick, counting the days that we had left together. But with Randy sticky, sticking solidly to the subject, it was impossible to think about anything else. My cigarette started trembling. I guess your folks feel kind of awful about it too. Ooh. My parents are dead. I live here with just Derry and Soda, my brothers. I took a long drag on my cigarette. That's what's worrying me. If the judge decides Derry isn't a good guardian or something, I'm liable to get stuck in a home somewhere. That's the rotten part of this deal. Derry is a good guardian. He makes me study and knows where I am and who I'm with all the time. I mean, we don't get along so great sometimes, but he keeps me out of trouble, or did. My father didn't yell at me as much as he does. I didn't know that. Randy looked worried. He really did. A soche, even, worried because some kid greaser was on his way to a foster home or something. That was really funny. I don't mean funny. You know what I mean. What does he mean? Any ideas? All right, let's keep reading. Listen to me, pony. You didn't do anything. It wasn't your friend Johnny that had the knife. I had it. I stopped him. He was looking at me strangely. I had the knife. I killed Bob. Randy shook his head. I saw it. You were almost drowned. It was the black-headed guy that had the switchblade. Bob scared him into doing it. I saw it. I was bewildered. I killed him. I had the switchblade, and I was scared they were going to beat me up. No, kid, it was your friend, the one who died in the hospital. Johnny is not dead. My voice was shaking. Johnny is not dead. Hey, Randy. Derry stuck his head in the door. I think you'd better go now. Sure, Randy said. He was still looking at me kind of funny. See you around, pony. Don't you ever say anything to him about Johnny. I heard Derry say in a low voice as they went out. He's still pretty racked up mentally and emotionally. The doc said he'd get over it if we gave him time. I swallowed hard and blinked. He was just like all the rest of the Soches, cold-blooded mean. Johnny didn't have anything to do with Bob's getting killed. Pony boy, boy Curtis, put out that cigarette. Okay, okay, I put it out. I ain't going to go to sleep smoking, Gary. If you make me stay in bed, there ain't anywhere else I can smoke. You're not going to die if you don't get a smoke. But if that bed catches on fire, you will. 
You couldn't make it to the door through that mess. Well, golly, I can't pick it up and soda doesn't, so I guess that leaves you. He was giving me one of those looks. All right, all right, I said. That don't leave you. Maybe soda will straighten up a little. Maybe you can be a little neater, huh, little buddy? He'd never called me that before. Soda was the only one he ever called little buddy. Sure, I said. I'll be more, more careful. Interesting. So that's the end of chapter 11. I told y'all it was a short chapter. Um, it's crazy to me that all of a sudden, Pony Boy is saying he's the one that killed Bob. I mean, multiple times on pages 165 and 166 of this version, um, he said, I killed Bob. I killed Bob. It was me. I killed Bob. And Johnny is not dead. Why is he saying that? I mean, we know that Pony Boy did not kill Bob. And the, the story is not changing now. We're not learning new facts. I mean, why is Pony saying these things? That's what I would love to have a discussion about now in class or those of you watching, I'd love for um, you to maybe have this discussion with your classmates. Why is Pony Boy saying this? Like, who is he trying to convince of anything? I mean, he's talking to a guy that was there when it all happened. Somebody else who saw it happen, who knows that what Pony is saying isn't true. So why? That's my question for you. Um, if you have comprehension questions to answer, um, go ahead and work on those now. Wrap those up. Um, and if you have any questions and are watching this from somewhere else, leave them in the comments and I will love to chat with you about it. Thanks for tuning in and listening. Bye.